This little video is about transporting the lumber from up in the mountains, the trees, and floating it down these rivers and streams to the place where they could use it on the railroads. And uh, this uh, silent video just shows them, uh, I don't know, I guess they're supposed to be building a, the railroad here, I don't know what it was about, but it, it's generally true. They, you know, had the railroad ties and then they wouldn't ties and then they laid the rails on them and drove the spikes in and then they moved them and wherever it was. Now, one thing you, that we should notice on this when they made this uh, movie here is all of these uh, ties are square, you know, they're flat on four sides and they're all the same length uh, or in general. But when they built the Intercontinental Railway, uh, that wasn't true. And that's when all of this stuff was established that I'm going to be talking about. Is the line was surveyed out before 1967, and by 1967 they had a couple things they uh, that they did. They they brought in the military and uh, get got rid of the Indians so they didn't bother the railroad workers, and then. They built them a fort there at Fort Steele to do that because that's where the railroad train, the Union Pacific in this case, was going to uh, cross the North Platte River. Uh, so, anyway, they needed uh, lots of trees and they were going to float them down the river to um, what we're talking about mostly is at Fort Steele. But as you can see from the next three pictures here, uh, the, the first ties that they put in were only flat usually on one side and they were various lengths and uh, not in very good shape and they needed to be constantly replaced you know I mean they were uh, in terrible shape as you can see from these pictures now also they had bridges this is over the uh, Dale Stream Gorge which was a tremendous bridge and most of them weren't this big but this required a lot of timber also now what I'm talking about is the area where I floated on the river, all of this area of the North Platte River you show, and I'm showing the town of Fort Steele where they collected the, the logs, and Saratoga, of course, where I live, they floated them through there. Now I'm showing where the various streams that went into the North Platte, uh, the mouths of them where they joined the North Platte. The, these are the main ones that they, where they were cutting the timber up in the mountains and floating it down. Okay, uh, this is, you can read this, what it says here. One thing that's, uh, wrong on here as they say those ties were five inches to the side that's not true they were usually about nine they were nine inches I think when they started making them uh, square you know what I mean that uh, originally like I said they were one side then they did two sides and you'll see a lot of them that they're floating down where they're two sides that way that they didn't have to dig down and they would be the height of them would be the same all the time you can see what uh, the stuff that these are the tools that they used. I had a picaroon when I was young. I don't know whatever happened to it. And this is the sawmill at Fort Steele. I don't know. It's not dated exactly when it was. This is where they captured the ties. You can see here it's one and a half million timbers down the North Platte River in one year. That's that's a tremendous amount of timber. And here's a bridge which also requires a lot of lumber. And Fort Steele, of course, like I said, uh, Fort Steele was established, it was actually established in 1967. They say 1968, that that's when they had this stuff there and the military built buildings and stuff there. And 1986 is when, from so from 68 to 86 is when it was there. And this shows the area of the sawmill where they uh, you see they put a boom across the North Platte River there and then they take those logs in and uh, they were cut to usually to length when they got them and then they pile them up until they wanted to put them on a box car and or a railroad car of some kind and use them on the railroad and here this shows these guys doing that and I don't know if this is actually at Fort Steele but anyway this is the the procedure they'd get those up a ramp onto a a railroad car and then they could use them and transport them out to the railroad mood. and this is just a picture of uh, them floating 
Americans were... And I'll let another guy the talk here now. Were perhaps the Carbon Timber Company, the Wyoming Tie and Timber Company, the Standard Timber Company, which operated at Fox Park in Evanston, Wyoming. The Carbon Timber Company was organized about 1901 by Wagner, Meyer, and Andrew Olson with the purchase of the then-existing Teller Outfit, which was operating on Brush Creek out of Saratoga. They may have acquired holdings from other small outfits. This Carbon Timber Company expanded rapidly on the North Platte River drainage to include Encampment River, Douglas Creek, Big Creek, Pass Creek, Brush Creeks, and some other small streams. They also pushed their operations to include the Medicine Bow River and then to the western part of the state to include Black's Fork, Henry's Fork, and other streams tributary to the Union Pacific. By 1908, their production from the North Platte alone had reached 30 million feet, and a short time later, in one single spring drive from the North Platte, they moved and marketed about 52 million feet, representing by far the greatest single year out of timber in Wyoming by any one company. In 1916, the Carbon Timber Company ran into financial difficulties and were taken over by the Wyoming Timber Company, which confined its efforts principally to Douglas Creek and French Creek until they passed out of the picture. The Wyoming Timber Company was financially successful in their endeavors, but perhaps never reached a higher annual production in excess of 15 million feet. At contract time in 1939, the Union Pacific Railroad informed the Wyoming Timber Company that they would not accept any more river-driven ties after the 1940 annual tie drive. This forced the company to truck their ties to Laramie Tie Plant at a cost of 26 cents per tie, compared to an average of... That guy was going to say six cents. That's what it went from 26 to six. I mean, from six to 26. Now, one thing I wanted to bring out, notice uh, the structure they built there to keep those ties from going in that uh, little area between the island and... Uh, and that's where I lived, as a matter of fact. And anyway, uh, those structures like that along the river, there were hundreds of those things. When I was floating the river there in the 50s, they were, I suppose some of them were still there. You could see where those tie hacks had built that, uh, those things to keep the ties so they could herd them down the river properly. Uh, well, anyway, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video as much as I enjoyed making it. And uh, it was something else. And... Uh, so anyway, it was just something that I'm interested in. And again, you can see a tremendous number of trees and they'd float all those things down the streams there. And none of this stuff is mine. I just grabbed it off the YouTube in various places. So anyway, goodbye.